Shri Guru Bhyon Maha Hari Om. So this is the second article from the book Sarva Bhasha Mai Bhasha, Sri Bhuvalaya, the 10th wonder of the world, authored by Sudharthi Hasan and translated to English by Shri Kavi Suresh. The second article, narration by Hemant Kumarji. The nature of Sri Bhuvalaya and its uh, path of survival. As already mentioned earlier, Sarva Bhasha Mai Bhasha Sri Bhuvalaya is an ancient Kannada poetry in numerics. In other words, the poetry is written in Kannada numbers. The po this poetry has been written using Kannada numbers from 1 to 64. These numbers represent the 64 alphabets in the Sarva Bhasha Mai Bhasha Kannada language. The letters are U uh, A uh, A. Uh, uh, so like this, there are nine e u r l e i o o. So nine basic swaras, and each one has hraswa uh, dirga plutha. So nine nine. Hrasas for us, they also have their counterparts, Dirgha and Plutha. So it gives you 27 Swaras. Then you have Vanjanas from Kavarga, Chavarga, Tavarga, Tavarga, and Pavarga. 25 Vargya Vanjanas. Then Yara, Lava, Shya, Shya, Saha. 8 Vargya Vanjanas. Then Am, Aha, Ah, Kah, Pah. So those four Ayogavahas. Kah, Wow. So this is a, a sign which represents or looks like the uh, letter Z in the English and uh, or four dots. This is a sign which is uh, going to represent, represent the English letter almost similar to the English letter F. So how the Siribu Alaya is, you know, structured, okay? It has something called as matrix or chakra. Each chakra is a matrix. It's a square matrix of 27 by 27 cells, 27 vertical cells and 27 horizontal cells. 27 into 27 is 729, the small squares. So each page has this one big chakra or the matrix or a circle. Okay. Like this, the entire literature has 16,000 chakras. Okay. So this is particularly, I'm giving my explanation. This is particularly uh, to protect the sanctity of the, or authenticity of the literature. So they have converted the original literature into these 16,000 chakras, okay? They are not the original literature, but the Akshara Bhuvalaya or the Padyas, uh, the original literature has been converted into this numerical format. The numerics have to be read by applying the corresponding alphabet in different formats. They are called as bandhas or patterns, patterns to decipher that particular matrix. Okay. Uh, they, bandhas refer to the set of set patterns uh, within which the literature is incorporated, such as in columns, etc. So those bandhas are, there are 40 bandhas uh, as claimed in the first khanda of Sribhulaya. Uh, some of the examples like Shredi Bandha, Sarpa Bandha, Jodi Nagar Bandha, Hamsa Bandha, Mayura Bandha, Mayura is Peacock. So these are the Bandhas they have told, but it's not exactly the Rangoli patterns or the diagrams, sacred diagrams what we see. So it's nothing related to that. But there is a way of uh, reading the literature. Okay. So uh, this will reveal the literature of many other languages. And since we don't have the literature from second khanda to ninth khanda, we can't say anything about these 40 bandhas unless we get the uh, some part of the next literature, uh, which is uh, which, which is uh, deciphered by Kalamangalam Shikantaya uh, or any person uh, having the virginal uh, copies of uh, next eight khandas of Sri Bhuvalaya, if they make it available to us, then we can talk about this further, okay? So this uh, is going to reveal the literature in different languages as claimed in the first khanda. Based on that, 
claim we are talking here, the different languages that come out of this exercise are 718. Presently, uh, this uh, these chakras have been deciphered in the Shredi Bandha, Shredi format for the pattern. It's a literature concealed in a column. Okay. And the Kannada literature in is coming out in the Sangatya Shaili. Sangatya Shaili. That is Sangatya style is Kannada meter that has been identified. If the entire poetry is deciphered like this, the total number of Kannada meter style, that Sangatya means a style of writing Kannada poems in four line format. Okay. Basic Kannada poems that emerge from this great work will be six lakhs. When this is read with suitable class uh, classifications as instructed, we get a definite nature of the literature pertaining to harmony and cohesion of 363 philosophies or Mata, we call it as. Some people uh, equate it to religion. We don't go with those words. We will go with the Mata, 363 Matas or philosophies, we can say, in 718 different languages. Uh, 18 main languages and 700 sub-languages. Uh, so, uh, 18 main languages starting from the Kannada, Samskrita, Prakrita, Pali, Magadi, Ardha, Magadi, Malaya, like this, the major languages and 700 sub languages. And the importance of Sri Bhavala from Indian science, technology, and literature perspective is that it's it's covering the ancient arithmetic, space, OH, Ayurveda, physics, chemistry, biology musicology, atomic science, computer technology, Vedic literature, ancient literature such as Ramayana, Mahabharata, etc. All the other topics is claimed to be available in this. So it's like an encyclopedia. It is but natural that this style of incorporating the literature in of 718 languages of the world by this codified method of uh, writing may look strange to us. We find the following writing in the Sri Bhula poetry by Kumudendu Muni. Uh, like there is no Vataksha Krama, we call it as. We join the letters and certain supportive letters will also be available, but that kind of format is not there. It's all individual letters. For example, Karma Pala, if you want to uh, write, K -r uh, Kannada is k, so the one which is shown in the slide. So in that format, Kannada is the word it is going to emerge. That means all the separate letters. So that's how it is written. Because there are certain reasons, however, it would be extremely difficult to read and comprehend the entire poetry by reading in this format. This is an amazing and marvelous work in Kannada numerics, Sribhulaya. Based on the divine knowledge that flowed from one saint, that is Guru or the preacher, the Tirthankara, to another, the disciple of famous commentator Virasena and the Guru, preacher of the emperor of Rashtrakuta, Amogavarsha, Kumudrindu Muni, belonging to Yapaniya Jain tradition, carved this great work. Okay. So why the Vataksara Krama is not there, that's a separate, separate letters is, there are several reasons it cannot be uh, easily inscribed in the manuscripts or the palm leaves or also in the stones. So these are, these are some of the reasons. Karlamangalam Shrikantaya, a staunch lover of Kannada, designed the writing format by adopting the relevant Kannada numbers. By this, out of 60, he was able to study about four portions of this great work. Of this, about a fourth portion of his, this work was published in a modern printing format as early as in uh, 1953 for the benefit of Kannada readers. He was a great scholar in many languages by his own efforts through his formal education, uh, though, though his formal education was only up to third standard. Of course, it would be difficult for anyone to believe this. Okay, so it is claimed that Sudhatiji has uh, seen the exact literature uh, deciphered by Kalamangalam Shikataya and it is kept uh, in the authority or uh, acquisition of his family members. They're not giving it to anyone to read or to expose it to the public. That's a very tragedy thing. Uh, Kalamangalam Shikantaya has worked a lot, uh, but their family members are not even uh, allowing anyone to look into that work. And uh, uh, they're not even publishing it. That's a very sad tragedy of uh, Kannada literature. Even though great uh, saint like Kalamangalam Shikantaya has written that for the public, okay? So Sir, uh, Sir Bhulaya Sudharthi has seen that and he has said that 
uh, he, he, he has seen around the fourth khanda up to fourth khanda several adhyayas of sri bhuvalaya was deciphered and written by thalamangalam shikantaya 1270 chakras of sri bhuvalaya and the related virginal literature which were discovered due to his unmatched brilliance came to the knowledge of the then president of india dr rajendra prasad he did not consider it as a literature pertaining to kannada language only instead he felt that it is a treasure mine of knowledge pertaining to the entire mankind under his instructions this work is being preserved permanently in the national archives department of india in indian government in delhi in some in terms of microfilm format kalamangalam kalamangalam shrikantheya was a multi talented personality despite formal education school education he had gained mastery over 16 languages on his own at the research standards level okay he thus became very popular for his rare and brilliant research work this was unpalatable to some of the other scholars they tried to sideline this research work on sri bhuvalaya by raising unnecessary controversies with this the so called owner of this book pandit began propagating that he did the research work of transforming sri bhuvalaya to to alphabet form and exerted himself in creating the supporting documents okay that's all was done to sideline the kalamang shri kalamangalam shrikantheya only those who watched the brilliance and work efficiency of kalamangalam shrikantheya closely knew about his greatness for this valid reason only dr s shrikantha shastri famous professor of indian history has lauded his unmatched brilliance in no uncertain terms mrs elizabeth banner of hungary mr farrell of uh, usa mr uh, sirigetan pa of uh, Uh, japan and other foreign scholars have described this ancient kannada poetry in numerics sarvabhashamayi bhasha sri bhuvalaya as the 10th wonder of the world it's not that uh, sudarthi ji has given this coined this name but the foreign uh, authors they have given this name coined this name it is a well known fact that conferences are being regularly held at the taluk district state country and international levels to discuss about the kannada language its literature culture and other related issues however over the past 60 years no record is forthcoming to indicate any fruitful and detailed discussion being conducted about the world famous sri bhuvalaya no wonder this has uh, remained an unknown work to even the most elite literature lovers many people describe this as a great piece of poetry unparalleled literature etc etc apart from this it may not be wrong to state that no effort is made till now to give a definite and specific introduction of this ancient work to the common readers but sudharthi ji has done this he has uh, published publicized uh, so many uh, articles and books and uh, okay there's a lot of uh, talks he has given okay also some minor workshop have been conducted many of them were filled with a lot of biases so we don't authentically say that they are at the level of uh, unbiased research due to the efforts of pustaka shakti prakashan of bangalore during the last decade after 2000 a team of scholars headed by dr t v venkatachala shastri revised the 1953 edition of this work in their own perspective and published the incomplete version however the details therein have created much more confusion the 1953 edition of this ancient work published by sarvarth siddhi sangha maintain uh, mentioning the pandit ellappa shastri as the researcher needs lot of patience and interest even to read understand and brief others dr s shri kanta shastri has made it clear about 60 years back itself that it is not a literature piece for entertainment reading okay many research scholars in universities nowadays prefer to choose subjects from literature works which are easy to digest and complete their doctorate thesis and obtain doctorate nadoja etc degrees nadoja etc uh, the name and fame or the degrees but no one had time all these years to study sri bhuvalaya which had the wrong reputation of being very difficult to read and understand it's a wrong reputation reputation okay it's not difficult to read and understand it's the laziness of the human being that has uh, uh biased and uh, given the wrong notion or attributed the wrong word or the phrase against the sri bhuvalaya that it is very difficult to read and understand it's not at all it's very easy to understand actually naturally this treasure mine of divine knowledge has remained elusive and unknown even now however the scenario has since changed it is learned that many research students have lined up to take a uh, 
the research work on Siripuvalaya. As earlier mentioned, Dr. Rajendra Prasad, who was appraised about this uh, great ancient work by the Vedic scholar of Gokarna, Brahmarshi Devaratha, considered this as a treasure mine of knowledge pertaining to the entire world and made arrangements for its preservation in the form of microfilm by the National uh, Archives of India. However, this is not easily accessible to the interested. Even I went, they, they troubled a lot even to show that document. Now it's government uh, that doesn't want anything related to literature to flourish. So, because there is no gain, monetary gain in that. Besides, it is doubtful whether this document is available to us in its original form. Many software engineers are confident that with the help of modern computers, it is possible to take up further research of this work. But uh, I'm so sorry to say that you don't have any knowledge in the Sri Bhuvalaya. Okay. You may be a software engineer, but you don't have any knowledge in the Sri Bhuvalaya. I am a software engineer. I mean, artificial intelligence uh, software engineering manager in one of the reputed uh, MNCs. So I have also, during my assistant professorship in an engineering college, did the projects on Sri Bhuvalaya for two years with eight students. Okay. The results is that the computer is not a way to decode or decipher the Sri Bhuvalaya. Okay. I have all the proofs related to that. So don't waste your time and effort uh, because this is this is a fuzzy logic kind of thing. There is no pattern at all to find out and do the programming. Okay, there is no such a thing. So it's all uh, to be done manually. Okay, it's not nothing can be done uh, by any programming approaches here. The sad part of this is that those scholars who have the accreditation of the universities have no knowledge on this ancient work, neither have they any, uh, they have any interest and time. Those who are really interested and capable of handling this task do not get the approval and cooperation of these so-called university recognized scholars. For these silly reasons, this an rare ancient work is yet to see the light of the world in its entirety. Based on the historical events over the past 60 years, as also the information obtained from the study of this work, Sudhati of Hassan prepared and published an introductory book on this subject under the title Sri Bhuvalaya Sara in Kannada. It contains details of the work that has gone underway over the past 60 years on this ancient literature. It also discusses in detail about things that should have been done and the steps to be taken now to unearth this wealth of knowledge. The Kannada poems in Kannada meter contained in Sri Bhuvalaya have been edited and published in the modern Kannada language. For those who find it difficult to understand this work, another book is simple Kannada prose style titled Sri Bhuvalaya the Vandu Minchunota. A quick overview of Sri Bhuvalaya. And also Sri Bhuvalaya the Jaya Antargata Bhagavad Gita has have been published. And also uh, afterwards this English book, uh, there was uh, Jagatina Atanechari in Kannada. Uh, then Sankshipta Sri Vopala, a small book in Kannada, also have been published. A Hindi version, Sri Bhuvalaya Ki Ek Janki of Sri Bhuvalaya Sara has also been published. Another book entitled Sri Bhuvalaya Da Vada Nota, giving a brief and simple introduction of this great work, has also been written and published by Sudhati of Asan recently. Another book, Sri Bhuvalaya Sagaratna Manjusha by Sudhati of Asan, has also been released. The publication of these seven introductory books on Sri Bhuvalaya is the result of the invaluable guidance of late K. Ananta Subbharao, inventor of Kannada typewriter, and the persistent efforts of Sudharthi over the past 27 years. The summarized form of all these seven introductory books is now published in English language. Uh, now, once again, thanks to Sri Kavi Suresh of Shomaka. Okay, so with this, uh, we close the narration of a second article from this book. So we'll meet the third article uh, till then. Uh, let's let's uh, try to digest the vastness of Sri Bhuvalaya and uh, let's give all sort of respect to the scholars who have worked on Sri Bhuvalaya to bring it to this particular shape. Thank you one and all.